Put it down, I'll give it back. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. All right, let's talk about Luthen Rael on Andor, and specifically why he might just be a secret Jedi. Now, we've resisted throwing out many Andor theories, because look, it's, it's really not that kind of show. We don't think that Kino Loy is the genetic template for Snoke, just because Andy Serkis plays both characters. We don't think that Dedra is like the secret mom of Armitage Hux. But a Screen Crush viewer named Joe Lochran sent us a theory that, if it's canon, would make a ton of sense. In fact, it fits so perfectly, we had to make a video about this. The theory is that Luthen is a Jedi who survived the Jedi Purge, but we also have a great idea of what Jedi he is, and there's even evidence in the show that backs all this up. So remember, Andor takes place about five years before Star Wars A New Hope, so the Jedi Purge happened about 15 years before, coinciding with the creation of the Empire. Star Wars canon is filled with Jedi who survived the Great Purge. Now, leading up to this show, a lot of them, like Jocasta Nu and this guy, are confirmed dead, so we're not going to list all of those people. But there are a few others like Kanan Jarrus, Yoda, Obi-Wan, Cal Kestis, Ahsoka Tano, and maybe Quinlan Voss, who are still kicking around the galaxy at this point. Now, of course, all of them were gone before the return of the Jedi. And we know this because of the line that Yoda said. What god am I? The last of the Jedi will you be? But there's a loophole there. Ahsoka Tano had quit the Jedi Order and was never officially made a Jedi Knight. So she was still around to meet Luke Skywalker. In the now non-canon but still very good book, Dark Lord, Rise of Darth Vader, a Padawan named Oli Starstone walks away from the Order. So I think it's likely that dozens of Jedi walked away from the life and their connection with the Force diminished over time. But remember, there were thousands and thousands of Jedi all across the galaxy. For instance, there's Ser Junda, a former Jedi Master who cut herself off from the Force. And there were other Jedi who were technically still part of the Order, but had almost no contact with it. The 2017 comic book, Darth Vader, showed him hunting down a hermit Jedi named Kirak and Philia. Why is there going over all this stuff? Because I want to establish that there is a precedent for the Jedi surviving the Purge and operating throughout the Empire, and that this does not contradict with what Yoda says. The last of the Jedi will you be. In fact, Ahsoka Tano not only survived the Jedi Purge, but she tried to live a quiet life and ended up joining Bail Organa to found the Rebellion. Okay, so the best thing about this is... Wait a second. All right, there we go. Err, what was that? Oh, that was just my breathing goal, one of my task goals for the afternoon. Why do you need an app to breathe? <laughs> oh, Doug. It's just a daily reminder to center myself on this happiness trainer app called Fabulous. They're the sponsor of this video. Fabulous is a digital coach that uses behavioral science to teach me good habits that help me enable my goals. Well, how does it work? Oh, it's great. So this app uses two different approaches. One is called habit tracking. I started off by saying what I wanted to work on, like having more energy in the afternoons. Then I choose daily rituals that help me to achieve those goals. It starts off tracking little habits like drinking water every morning and taking a breath. Then we added other tasks like taking vitamins, tidying up, and now there are several new habits to choose from. The second approach is called dedicated programs, which is based on behavioral science and allows you to experience your best well-being goals. This is like a personal journey where your good behavior unlocks new letters that guide the process and add a new positive action that becomes part of your daily routine. So it's like a video game, but instead you level up yourself. Exactly. Fabulous makes it fun to accomplish your goals and improve your life. So I recommend you give it a try and start building your daily routine. The first 100 people who click the link in the description will get 25% off a fabulous daily subscription. Okay, back to Andor. Now let's specifically talk about Luthen and why he can actually be a Jedi Master in hiding. But not just any Jedi Master, Jedi Master Uvel. Never heard of him. Neither had I until Joe Lochran sent us this theory. In Star Wars Insider issue 154, there was a canon story called The End of History, written by Alexander Freed and illustrated by Chris Scaliff. So here's the gist of this story. The main character is named Antron Bach. During the Republic years, he was an antiques dealer who specifically specialized in Jedi artifacts. So he made friends with several Jedi as part of his dealings. Then, during Order 66, a Jedi Master named Duvel basically filled his ship with Jedi artifacts and holocrons and told Bach to preserve this history. Bach then settled on a former Geonosian colony. You remember Geonosians, the bug people from Attack of the Clones? Now, years later, the Empire tried to wipe them out, killing 100 billion of this species. Unfortunately, all we were able to recover were images of the poison canisters used by the Empire against the Geonosians. Not relevant, but all of this is context. So, Bach hides these artifacts for about 10 years, until a member of the Corellian Resistance shows up and asks for his help. Then, Bach has to decide if he will risk exposing these artifacts by helping this person. He ultimately decides to help them, and we never really find out if the artifacts were discovered or not. But Bach does end the story certain that he will die on his mission, and he's hopeful that the Empire will not discover the Vault of Jedi artifacts. So, 
The theory for Andor goes like this. Luthen Rael might be the antiques dealer Antron Bach, or more likely, he is the former Jedi Master Uvel. Master Uvel, Luthen Rael, same guy. But why would you go into hiding and keep the same name? I don't know. Ask Ben Kenobi. She said Obi-Wan Kenobi. I wonder if she means old Obi-Wan Kenobi. So here's why we think this theory could be true. Let's say that Jedi Master Uvel, after sending Antron Bach away, kept tabs on him. We've seen that Luthen is a paranoid guy, so it's not unreasonable to think that he would have spies or a tracker to keep track of all of these different artifacts. So he finds out that Antron was killed and decides that he can use his stash of antiques as cover for a new identity. His shop is filled with Jedi artifacts. For example, there are the Jedi and Sith holocrons in his back room. What's a holocron? Great question. A holocron is like a Jedi hard drive where information stories and lessons are stored. In the old canon, Luke learned a lot about how to become a Jedi from the old holocrons that he discovered. Think of them as kind of like the crystals that Superman uses to talk to Jor-El. Your help would be called for endlessly, even for those tasks that human beings could solve themselves. So Luthen has a holocron from the Jedi and from the Sith in his back room, which doesn't actually really make any sense because the Empire has outlawed anything Jedi related. There's even a comic book where we saw a public destruction of all the lightsabers from the Jedi Temple. So we assumed at the time that all of these holocrons were replicas, but actually this theory explains why they could be genuine. At this point, the Empire believes that the Jedi are dead. Most people don't even believe in the Jedi or in the Force. It's all a lot of simple tricks and nonsense. So Jedi artifacts would be seen as curiosities. The lightsabers are, of course, outlawed and very dangerous, but a holocron would be harmless because, look, nobody can use the Force anymore, so no one would be able to open it. Not only that, but it's not public knowledge that the Emperor is a Sith, and in public, the Sith Inquisitors are just called Inquisitors. So as far as people around the galaxy know, there are no Force users in the galaxy. In fact, a lot of people think the Force doesn't actually exist. There are even people who think that the Jedi were just tricksters and charlatans, kind of like Haja Estri and Obi-Wan. But a Sith holocron would be of interest to the Emperor. But again, this guy is selling things in plain sight. He seems harmless, so no one is coming knocking on his door. He also does keep the holocrons in the back room, hidden from public view. I got a couple theories actually on how the holocrons could help him hide his identity that I'm going to talk about in just a second. There are actually other Jedi artifacts in his shop that are much less dangerous. There's the mask of a Jedi temple guard. Now, these would be a bit more common because following Order 66, it kind of would have been strewn about the temple grounds. There's also the stone relief sculptures that we've talked about before on this channel. The sculptures match a carving that we saw on Lothal in Star Wars Rebels. Now, look, this isn't the same carving because that episode of Rebels takes place a few years after this series is set, but the carvings depict the hands of three very powerful Force users, the brother, the sister, and the father. These beings were seen in the Clone Wars series, and they're basically symbolic entities representing the dark side, the light side, and the balance of the Force. In Star Wars Rebels, Ezra had to use the Force to move these hands into a particular position, which opened a portal to the World Between Worlds, a kind of nexus of time and space that allowed for time travel. <laughs> But again, these would be seen as harmless because you have to use the Force to actually use them. But if there's a Jedi hiding from the Empire, why would he sell Jedi artifacts in the middle of the Imperial capital? Well, I'll let Gus Fring explain it. I hide in plain sight. Nobody would ever think a Jedi would be selling Jedi artifacts right under the Emperor's nose. That is what makes it so perfect. But wouldn't the Emperor sense a Jedi on Coruscant? Not necessarily. There's two reasons for this. One, Luthen could have cut himself off from the Force, like Sarajenda or Luke Skywalker. And two, dark side objects can be used to mask Force users. Yoda chose to live on Dagobah specifically because there was a dark side cave there, which masked his presence. Luthen's Sith holocron could be doing the same thing, with the Jedi and Sith holocrons essentially canceling each other out, like creating white noise that would mask his presence from the Emperor. Yeah, but he's on Coruscant. Wouldn't somebody recognize a former Jedi? Not necessarily. There were thousands of Jedi. Not all of them lived on Coruscant. Some of them, like Karak and Philia, lived on distant outposts and barely had any contact with the Jedi Council. Luthen could have even left Coruscant like in his 20s and not returned till after the Jedi Purge. And we know from the short story, The End of History, that Master Uvel fought in the Clone Wars, so he could have spent a lot of time away from the capital. Also, some of the Jedi did some dark, dark things during the Clone Wars. A Jedi named Pong Krell got increasingly brutal during that time, eventually turning to the dark side. If Luthen, sorry, Jedi Master Uvel, was far removed from Central Command, then he would have seen some dark combat and come close to the edge of falling to the dark side. And this is where I think the theory is the most fun. There are subtle hints and clues within the show that would line up perfectly with this theory. We could even guess that Clea is maybe his former Padawan based on what she says here. I don't have lately. I have always. 
And then we also have to consider the time period when he turned on the Empire. In Stellan Skarsgård's epic monologue, he says that he's been fighting the Empire for its entire existence. 15 years. And the thing is, there was no reason to fight the Empire when it was first formed. The Empire was the Republic, just reorganized. Most people believe that the Emperor was doing good, keeping them safe. Now, maybe Luthen could have been a Separatist, but then he would have been fighting the Empire for 18 years the link since the Clone War started. So the Empire, when it was formed, did something bad, something to motivate Luthen to rebel, something like Order 66. In fact, when you break down his monologue, it's really easy to imagine that you're hearing words from a secret Jedi. The spy asks what he has sacrificed, and the first thing that comes to his mind is... Calm. Calm, calm like the inner peace that comes when you are balanced with the Force. Yoda tells Luke that this is how he will recognize the dark side. You will know when you are calm. Like this. But Luthen has no comp, so he can basically succumb to the dark side easily. Good. And the other things he sacrificed are the core teachings of the Jedi Order. Kindness, kinship, love. And he goes on to say, I've given up all chance at inner peace. I made my mind a sunless space. Because he has shunned the Jedi ways and is now a spy who does dirty work so others, like Luke Skywalker, can stay clean and take the credit. He says, I share my dreams with ghosts. The ghosts of the thousands of Jedi that the Empire has killed. His friends who he is trying to avenge. But vengeance is not the Jedi way, which is why he says, I'm damned for what I do. Just like Yoda says, What? You start down the dark path, forever will it dominate your destiny. Which Luthen echoes here. My anger, my ego, my unwillingness to yield, my, my eagerness to fight, has set me on a path from which there's no escape. And his fall to the dark side seems inevitable when he says, and By the time I look down, there's no longer any ground beneath my feet. And mostly, he ends the monologue with this. What is my, what is my sacrifice? I'm condemned to use the tools of my enemy. He is forced to act as a Sith in order to defeat the Sith. He also talks about how he has to shun the light, fighting for a sunrise that he'll never see. And of course, the light is a metaphor for the light side of the Force. And finally, he ends by saying, So what do I sacrifice? Everything! Because to a Jedi, the Song of the Force is everything. It's what they devote their life to, and for him, it is gone forever. But also, look at some of the other facts. Mon Mothma trusts him implicitly, maybe because she knows that he was once a Jedi. And there's also his extendable cane. Put it down, I'll give it back. Which is roughly the same size as a lightsaber hilt, and it being a cane might just be a cover for him to keep his weapon hidden in plain sight, just like him. Or, if you don't think this is a lightsaber, he does carry a kyber crystal with him around his neck. Just know it will always be worth more to me. I want it back when this is over. Now this could be the crystal from his actual lightsaber, and he wears it to remind him of who he used to be, and to remind him of the reason he's fighting, to avenge the Jedi Order. It's also possible that Luthen, like Ponkrell, did some pretty horrible things during the Clone Wars, and had already started to fall. Now symbolically, I think this backstory could be very interesting. If a dark Jedi helped to found that rebellion, that would mean that in some ways the rebellion was tainted from the outset. Maybe this meant that the Alliance, and by extension the New Republic, would always be doomed to failure at the hands of the First order. But would they really make Luthen a Jedi from an obscure short story from a magazine? Yes, because that is exactly the kind of Easter eggs this show does. All of the Easter eggs are extremely subtle name drops that weave their way into the story, like Mon Mothma's aid to the people of Gorman. But what do you guys think? Does this theory have legs? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.